How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here with Brian Alvarez for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We're also going to have Shelton Benjamin of Ohio Valley Wrestling up in about a half an hour. And we will talk about current news. We've got tons of emails and uh, just get to stuff. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing good. That's good. I just did, I, I've been actually out all morning, so I haven't had a chance to um, look at too much stuff, but I was kind of glancing through the letters. I mean, I don't know why, but when, I just started like laughing at all the, the, the Chris Jericho stuff. I don't know why, oh, because know. It's, it's, it's one of these things that's like for the last year and a half, it's like this big topic. You know, of, 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 you know, Chris Jericho. I mean, it's just so funny to me because it's like... It's a topic it's like, that shouldn't be a big topic. Well, it's not even a topic. I mean, I just find it so humorous because, um, I don't know why I find it humorous. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I guess from, from day one when he got to the WWF where he all of a sudden, after like, you know, how many years in wrestling, got this reputation where he couldn't work even though he'd been working for 10 years and in every place he'd been he'd had a reputation for being a very good worker and... You know, I mean, it's so obvious what it is. I mean, it was obvious from day one, and here we are two years later, and people are still trying to, like, put forth the same myth, you know, that was obviously, you know, a political game from the start. Yeah. I mean, just if you go back and just look at his debut, he had such a great debut on Raw. He had such a great, you know, such great interaction with Rock, and it was, like, all downhill from there. And how does that happen? I thought talent was well, supposed to rise to the top in the WWF. Well, I will say this. I do think that his interviews have gotten... Uh, I mean, he's uh, you know he's got lame catchphrases, yeah, and he has lame delivery of his catchphrases. His interviews in WCW I thought were far more creative and, and a lot better. I mean, as far as in the ring goes, I mean, in the ring he's not the best worker in the company, um, but he's a really good worker. And I mean, like you know, like is, is he as good as Chris Benoit? He's no, he's not. He's not as good as Chris Benoit. Not as good as Hunter, but for for a guy with his look and his charisma. And his crowd reactions when he when when you know, they were treating him seriously, and his interview ability, you know, he deserved to be at the top. And you know, and obviously from last summer, I mean, he was there. And, and how bad could his work be? I mean, look at the matches that he's had on pay per view. I mean, how yeah. bad, you know? I mean, his matches with Benoit are tremendous. His matches with Hunter are tremendous. Um, his matches with Angle at the house shows are tremendous. So I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, that's a joke that you know, like you know, oh, his work's not up to par. It's like you know. I mean, great. He's not as good as Chris Benoit. You know, guess what? Nobody else is either. That's right. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I was just like, I glanced through that, and I'm just thinking, like, Jesus Christ, we went through all this two years ago, and everyone knows what, you know, I mean, everyone knows the game. I mean, Hunter came in, spread a bunch of stories about him from day one, and it's like, and you know what? You know, yeah, Hunter is a better worker than Chris Jericho, but that doesn't mean, you know, I mean, okay, that doesn't mean... It's good for the promotion to hold someone down, as we've seen from WCW, because you know what? Kevin Nash, I can't believe I'm going to say this, has more charisma than almost everybody in WCW. Okay, he wasn't, he's not a better worker than almost anyone, but, but he does have more charisma, because when he comes out, you know, he knows how to get a pop. Scott Hall actually has more charisma than almost anyone in the business, but, and, um, if you go to, uh, to, uh, the NOAA promotion, there are certain, you know, or all, let's go to All Japan a couple of years ago. They had those guys who were the best workers in the world. But you know what? If you keep putting the same guys against the same guys over and over and over again, they could be the greatest workers, greatest talkers, greatest everything. But sooner or later, it's going to get stale. Rock and Triple H last year was a great, great feud. But by the time they were done with that feud, the fact was is that Rock and Benoit was a bigger drawing match because people mm -hmm. were, sick and, were sick of the feud. Hunter and Austin... Um, you know, at one, you know, did a bad buy rate last year because people had just seen the matchup enough, and they, you know, they were sick of it. So you need new guys and to constantly whoa, wait, fresh whoa, whoa, matches. Whoa, huh? Hunter and Austin what? got a bad buy rate because people were sick of that match. Uh, Survivor Series, they did a bad buy rate. Yeah, that was a, that was the, I think that was the lowest buy rate of the year for WWF was Hunter and Austin. But they couldn't have been sick of the match because Austin had been out for a year. Well, maybe they were sick of, maybe they were just sick of something. I don't know. Maybe they were... actually, I don't even know how to explain that buy rate looking back. Yeah, but anyway. But the two lowest buy rates of last year, I believe, were, were Hunter and Austin was the lowest, and then Hunter and Rock was second lowest. Yeah. And, and, and obviously well, Hunter, those and were, Rock, Hunter and Rock, that's obvious because they just wrestled so many they times. They just wrestled too many times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, I don't play. I mean, and they had, you know, Hunter and Rock had a great buy rate the month before, but that one was really drawn by Austin, um, you know, the backlash. I mean, yeah, I just anyone, have to go back and look at, like, the Steve Austin Undertaker feud. I mean, it did fine. They did about 10 million matches, and eventually and then at the, end, no, yeah, the, the last buy rate plummeted. Rate, <laughs> the people yeah, the were last buy rate. It. Yeah, the last buy rate they did, people didn't want to see it. Yeah, so that, that is the reason why you constantly have to create new guys, because the old guys in the same matchups will get stale. Speaking of that, 
that's sort of going to contradict the next thing I'm going to say. But um, anyway, All Japan, uh, All Japan, I said it again, NOAA did their um, uh, semifinal today of the global tournament. And they, and they put, swerved us. Yeah, well, they put Ta Yoshihiro Takayama over, which makes no sense. Um, and then they put him over by DQ, which, you know, if he'd beaten Vader by pin, I would have said, well, you know, it makes no sense, but what the hell, they're trying something. But to put him over on a DQ in this tournament, um, there is no, there's the no way. The day after a count out. There is no justification. They're killing, they're killing um, their title, um, and they're killing the foundation of their promotion because what pe people don't want DQs in Japan. I mean, it's... It's so well known. The, the crowd reacts so violently towards him. I mean, it's almost like, you know, that res when I when I woke up and I saw that result from the match today, it was like, now this is something seriously wrong because, you know, some you know booking isn't that complicated, um, but some you know, realistically it's not. Sometimes it can be, but this is like a mistake of so elementary proportions that anyone who could book this, who who, who think and go. We're going to put this guy over on a DQ in the semifinals of our world championship tournament. I'm thinking, like, now, that's someone who really has no clue. And it's funny because, you know, Masao is the booker, and he's been there for 20 years, and he was there during the ups and the downs, and I, I don't know what it is other than they probably think, well, you Maybe know what? watched King of the Ring last year. Yeah, well, that, yeah. Actually, you know what? I, what I was going to say is, is they're sitting there going, like, you know what? The number one promotion in the world is the WWF right now. And they do DQs. So why are we stuck in the past not doing DQs, not realizing that it's just a completely different, you know, like when they do DQs on WF shows now, if they do it three show, three matches in a row, you'll hear people groan and everything like that. But the people in the United States are not. They accept um, them. It's not so much they like them. They I mean, everyone hates they, they, DQs, they, they, yeah, but they're they, acceptable they don't love because, them. Yeah, they you know, don't there's love just them so either. much television and there's so many matches that you can do a DQ every now and then and people will accept it. Yeah. But over there... You know, I mean, those fans won't accept it. So you know, when you know what people don't want, <laughs> this is a question, Brian. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to book for what people want because no one knows. But when you know something, without any question, because every time they've done a DQ, the reaction's been the same. When you know something that people don't want, okay, what is the purpose of booking that? I don't know. I, I think you just you pointed out a couple seconds ago. It's the whole thing where they see the WWF, or I guess the WWF is like the biggest promotion in the world. It's so successful, and you know WWF does DQs. But it's like the same thing as if somebody nowadays were going to start a, a new promotion, they were going to create a new promotion and get Kevin Nash and all those guys, and they went back and decided we're going to book exactly like WCW in 1998 because it was the biggest, it was the biggest promotion in the world. Well, At it was time. the biggest promotion in the world, but the things that they were doing in 1998 led to it being dead today. So just because a promotion is huge or just because something is working doesn't mean that you need to copy the bad aspects of it. And I think that everyone would agree that the worst aspects of American wrestling are like the horrible finishes, the no finishes, uh, bad soap opera. So why would you copy that? How can you because not know what people want? Uh, because they, they, because obviously what's what what's going on there, you know, they're everyone, you know, everyone there is struggling right now, and they're looking for a formula, and the WWF looks like the formula. But I mean, look at all the formulas in the WWF, and how could someone think, okay, of all the things that the WWF is doing, wh why don't we copy because they, the bad finishes? Yeah, I know. No, I mean it was funny, and, and 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 there is a lot to learn. I mean that's one of the reasons why I like watching all wrestling, is because there's something to learn from all successful wrestling. I mean, you can't, you, you know what I mean? I mean, there's, and there's so much good about the WWF. I mean, there's so much. But that's not one of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, that King of the Ring tournament last year was not <laughs> something that you copy. Anyway, let's get through. We've got that's a bunch another of one right there. I'll, oh, God. How could they have screwed that up? Till the day I die, I will be thinking that same question. Yeah. They really had a hell of a tournament last year, and they screwed it up. I don't know if it was, was because, there? well... You know, we need to elevate Rikishi or whatever, but I don't know what they were thinking. They're whatever. not perfect. No one's perfect. We'll see this the, year. Uh, what? We'll find out this year. We'll find out this year. Power Pro Wrestling um, will officially be, the Memphis promotion will officially be folded, and we're going to have a press release on that uh, that Randy Hale sent out. Probably we'll read it after the break. But uh, their final television show will be this coming Saturday, and um, they were actually informed of this this past Saturday. Uh, that uh, this MWMC, this, they had a three-year contract with WMC, and it was actually expiring, and they were told last Saturday that it would not be renewed. And as far as the future of, maybe, I'm not sure what the, if the press release says something about the future of, of, of uh, wrestling in Memphis, 
but I'll, I'll read it and then try to fill in what it doesn't say um, after reading it. So anyway, we'll have that in just a minute. But um, yeah, they just got the word last Saturday that uh, they were being canceled. And um, a lot of guys So the are, whole promotion is folding? The promotion, the final pr show of the promotion will be Saturday, yes. Because without TV, there's no promotion. Yeah. So, uh, Abu Dhabi, I uh, got my re results here. I don't know how up to date they are. Actually, let's see. It looks like we got the, okay. Uh, in the 143 pound class, the finals look like, uh, the finals will be, well, this is, this will be tomorrow. Hoyler Gracie against Barrett Yoshida. Uh, let's see if there's anybody, uh, on this list that I need to go to. Joey Gilbert, who's in the next UFC, won his first round match and then lost in double overtime in his second round match. Uh, those would be the only names that uh, would be. Okay. Let's see. In the 167 weight class, uh, the finals are Matt Serra against M Marcio Feitosa Souza. Matt Serra will be in the next UFC against Shoney Carter. So he made it all the way to the finals. And let's see who did what here. Genki Suda of Pan Genki Suda of Pancras, who's a really fun fighter to watch, got beat nine to nothing by points by Rodrigo Gracie, who. And Ended up uh, winning the second round match and then lost to Feitosa Souza. Uh, Caro Uno uh, lost in the first round by points to Fernando Vasconcelos. Tetsuchi Kato, who's a, a judo guy. U Uno was in the last UFC and also did the New Year's Eve Pro Wrestling Show. He did a great job in that show, too, for his first pro match. He's actually a, a former judo guy who quit judo. Um, see, Kato lost by choke to Leonardo Silva dos Santos, which sounds like. Uh, a combination of like four different um, Mexican wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Jean Jacques Machado uh, won his first round match and then lost to uh, Matt Serra in his second round match. And Matt Serra beat Takanori Gomi in his first match. He was a shooto guy. He beat Jean Jacques Machado in the uh, second round, so he's in the finals. And then, uh, let's see, 191 pounds. Finals are Salo Ribeiro, who won it last year. And Sanai Kakuda of Pancras. And uh, Ribeiro actually lost in like 30 seconds at the uh, Tokyo, was a Tokyo Dome show with Yuki Kondo in a uh, no holds barred. Got kneed in the face. But, uh, so that's, it's, let's see, who, so I know, uh, let's see, 191. I know Tamara got thrashed. Let's see, let's look at a lot of names in this one. Akihiro Gono lost in the first round. That's, uh, let's see, Ribeiro went to the finals. Uh, Henzo Gracie lost in the first round by decision to Chris Brown. Kakuda beat Evan Tanner six to nothing. And then beat Egan Inoue, who was on the last uh, Pride show. Uh, I don't I don't know what the score was, but I just know he won. Uh, let's see. Tamara lost in one minute and two seconds with an arm bar to Ricardo Laborio, who's a Brazilian wow. guy. And uh, Egan Inoue beat a guy named Vola Demir, so it was a Russian guy with a choke in 930. And then he beat Laborio. And then he lost to Kakuda. So that's the, that weight class. And then we still got the heavyweights. Oh, no, we don't. We got two more. Okay. That's uh, a lot of one. fights in one day. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, 215-pound weight class. It's Ricardo Almeida, who, um, Ricardo Almeida is scheduled against, um, God, I forget who now. I think Ricardo Almeida is on the um, next UFC. Uh, Al, he's on the next UFC, right? Yes, I believe so. I now, I also that. heard, okay, I also heard an unconfirmed story that Ricardo Almeida is in the finals, except his arm is now in a sling. That may not be correct, but I did hear that about an hour ago. So, which may mean that he's uh, that not might in the mean finals. He's out of the finals. <laughs> yes, I know, and it may mean he's out of the UFC too. So we'll probably find that out uh, either later today or tomorrow uh, against Ricardo. If he Arona, was tough with Shane Douglas, he'd still be working with that. <laughs> Ricardo Arona, I've seen in rings. Uh, Ricardo Arona is a hell of a fighter. He's really exciting. So anyway, see in that weight class, uh, guys. Ricardo yeah. Almeida will be fighting Matt Lindland. Oh, wow. Oh, that'd be terrible to have that fight canceled. That's Seriously. A, a light heavyweight bout. Oh, Matt Lindland was an Olympic gold medalist against a uh, great submission guy. I love, that'd be a great fight. Oh, well. I hope I hope he's okay. Uh, let's see. I hope he's okay even if he if has nothing to do with it. Anyway, uh, Hegan Machado actually lost by referee stoppage in his first round match to a guy named John Olive Enamo, who lost to Arona in the, in the semifinals. And Siyoshi Kosaka from Rings Pro Wrestling. Uh, lost 5-2 to two in the first round to Holes Gracie, who actually I'm not familiar with. Then in the heavyweights, it's Jeff Monson. Wow, Jeff Monson beat Tom Erickson. Holes and Hoist? What? Holes. Holes and Hoist. I don't get it. You're trying to say a joke and I don't get it. <laughs> like Rolls Royce? 
Holds voice. Okay, I got it. You're right. God damn, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. It's Jeff Monson against Mark. Wow, Mark Robinson. Wow, that's a surprise. Okay, so Jeff Monson. Uh, let's see. Tom Erickson won his first round match two to nothing over Roberto Traben of Brazil, and then he lost to Monson. We don't have a score. Mike Van Arso got leg locked by Marcelo Ribeiro de Cruz in a minute seven. Then uh, Sean Alvarez beat Leo Costello Blanco uh, two to nothing. Vitor Belfort choked out Hikaru Fukuda, who I think is like uh, an amateur wrestler from Japan, in four minutes twenty-two. Then Mark Robinson, who's a big uh, Brazil, uh, South African powerlifter, who got knocked out by Bobby Hoffman at the last UFC, uh, choked out Valerie Uris School uh, in seven thirty-two. And uh, Rico Rodriguez beat Yoshiaki Yatsu in a flow with a flying armbar in 211. <laughs> that a almost flying like armbar? Rico Rodriguez is like 240 and he's doing a flying armbar. Then, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. That sounds like an interesting finish. Um, so uh, Rodriguez lost to Mark Robinson, which has to be, I guess, a minor upset, although Mark Robinson is super strong. And Monson beat, uh, Monson beat Alvarez. So anyway, that's where... Uh, Abu Dhabi stands. Let me get to poll questions here. Uh, what was the greatest pay-per-view show of all time? We only had five here. Uh, we didn't get a lot of complaints about the five we picked. Actually, you know what? We got like no complaints about the five we picked, which I'm amazed. That's because you told them not to complain. Okay. Although that usually doesn't work. But that's I <laughs> know. Anyway, AAA when worlds collide, 23%. Uh, the winner, and actually a pretty sizable winner, was the 1989, and this is a surprise in many ways, 1989 WCW Great American Bash, 32%. The reason I say that is for a number of reasons. Number one, it was WCW, although it was a hell of a show. Number two, it was 1989. That's like 12 years ago. And considering the mean age of our listenership, which is about 25 or 26, let's say 26-year-old person uh, would be 14 then. I guess they could have watched it. I'm just, I did. But a lot of people, a lot of people didn't. Uh, WCW 1996 Great American Bash 10 percent. WrestleMania 10, which was with the uh, Michaels and uh, Ramon Ladder match and Bret and Owen Hart, 11 percent. And then WrestleMania 17, which was last week, obviously, 23 percent. Actually, uh, When Worlds Collide beat WrestleMania by one vote, uh, technically. <laughs> so, so anyway, that was the behind Great American Bash. So that was the results. Uh, let's see. That's the notes I got. Uh, See, Vampiro is going to be starting an EMLL. Let me see if I have a date here on this. Um, Vampiro in the middle like of April June. 18. What? I heard May 19th, but it says the middle of June. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let's see. And it says this is just, he'll be a main eventer, obviously, because of his name. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. And that's pretty much it. Any other news to get to before we uh, start? It's all the main stuff. Okay. Of course, uh, SmackDown tonight with Jeff Hardy winning the Intercontinental from Triple H. Uh, let's see. This is from Dave Droschef of Alabama. Did you get my email about the WWF website? Um, what, is as far as the names of the, uh, of the Well, basically, shows? I went up there yesterday to make sure that those names were legitimate because I did not oh, believe yeah, that. Oh, and they, 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 they posted? Okay, well, you can tell the story. Well, basically, you know, I went to the news page, and there was a thing that said, um, do not click here or something if you don't want to know what happens on SmackDown, like a spoiler warning or whatever. So I thought, well, that's pretty cool. But then on the main page, when you first go into the website, there's a gigantic picture of Jeff Hardy covering Hunter and the words, game over, new Intercontinental Champion. And I thought, well, kind of spoiler for everyone that uh, went to the website, but it was a nice try. Well, that's, that's you know, just like anything else, though. Sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. I got an email Which last actually, night complaining about uh, feedback. They go, why didn't you put a spoiler warning on feedback? Because people were talking about Jeff Hardy winning the title. And it never even occurred to me. I didn't even think about it. But it's spoiled. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, and I'll say this right now. Who cares? Once okay. the news is out, the news is out. Okay, once something happens, it happens. Okay, um... If you're listening, if you, I mean, I, if you're listening to the show on a Wednesday or on a Thursday, and somebody brings up something on SmackDown, we're not going to pretend it didn't happen because it wasn't on television. And thus, also, if there's news that happens on SmackDown, I mean, like now on the main news thing that I write, I mean, I ignore the Tuesday stuff because we have the Tuesday stuff put up separately. But if something were to happen, you know, newsworthy based on it on a Wednesday, I mean, you know, the news is the news. You know, I, I you yeah. Know, why does I, something have to be televised? Can we not report yeah. on the uh, 
GHC tournament till it airs on TV? No, no one in Japan does that. It's not, you know. And, and well, I'm just saying, it would be the same thing here. Are people going to complain about that? Oh, you reported that Vader lost via DQ. I haven't seen it on TV yet. Yeah. Did we spoil well, it? Yeah. I figure once anyway. something happens, who cares? It happened. Once it's happened, it happened. Okay. Especially it's nowadays with news everywhere, it's so hard to try and, you know, watch a show that's taped without knowing what happens. Especially if you're looking around on the Internet. If you don't want to know, don't look around on the Internet. Well, the one good thing about wrestling, though, as compared to, say, like uh, a real sporting event or or, 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 some, or something like that, just a real sporting event, that sounds so weird, but, but you know what I'm saying, is that in, you can, if, you, if you don't click on the Internet, um, you can avoid results of wrestling matches, whereas if it was, say, like a big sporting event that was being taped delayed, you really can't. You know, you can't listen yeah. to the radio. Like, like remember when, um, I mean, which was actually one of the biggest events in the history of television was... Um, the uh, finals of the, what year was it, 1994, I think, 92? I think it was 94. Um, you know, with uh, Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Hardy? Yeah, it was 94, right? Yeah. So anyway, um, the, you know, it's like, you know, they aired that on tape delay. Um, and, you know, it got like, what, about like 48 rating or some incredible, stupid number. So anyway, um, but, you know, all day on the radio, they gave the results. And it's like, it was really hard to avoid, like, I, you know, I kind of didn't really want to know the results, but it was like it was impossible not to. I mean, what to, are you going to do? You have to like shut everything off in the house and uh, right, close right. all the You can't games. watch any television. You can't listen. So, so, so it was. The bottom line was is that I knew, and it was fine. And I still watched it anyway. But, but with wrestling, I mean, really, if you just don't click to the internet for two days, you can avoid the results. You, you actually can avoid those results. Um, but yeah, anyway. but if you're someone who wants to surf around the internet and look for news, don't complain when you find out what happened on a tape show. No, that's right. You're right about that. Okay, let me just do this one thing. Uh, then we will hit a break and we will hit some more emails. In today's update on the website, you mentioned the Wrestling Gold DVD. Do you recall any specific matches on this DVD? Since I announced them, I recall most of them. <laughs> um, a lot of Jerry Lawler. Uh, Jerry Lawler, a lot of Rick Rude, a lot of Randy Savage. Um, again, different guys, those guys against each other. Bundy was in there. It was, so it was that, that era of Memphis, like 1984. Um, I mean, I remember uh, Bruiser Brody Nick Bockwinkle match, uh, Nick Bockwinkle Manny Fernandez match, which was really good. Tully Blanchard, I think, in Manny Fernandez. Um, uh, Ricky Morton, Ricky Morton, and Robert Gibson against Randy Savage and Lanny Poffo. Um, when when watching back, the one thing you know, and I spent like, I mean, it's basically a weekend of watching these tapes over and over, and boy, there was such a difference in. Um, it, the style of wrestling was just so different. I think I remarked to Brian, like, right afterwards, is like, you know, I watched all those tapes and saw, like, almost no missed moves. But then again, I saw almost... There were no real for, moves to miss. Yeah, you know, except for Randy Savage and uh, and Ricky Morton, there was nothing that was really all that spectacular. The other thing watching back is is that if you look for what what you would envision a star being with today's eyes, and you look back at those tapes 16, 17 years, um, Savage was a hell of a worker. Okay, um, you know, I mean, you could see that. And, and Ricky Morton, obviously, was a really good worker. And Bruiser Brody had it. I mean, like, Bruiser Brody could be transplanted, like, with no update and put in today's wrestling scene, and he would be a total superstar. But almost everybody else um, on those tapes, when you watch them, um, I mean, Manny Fernandez was pretty decent. You know, Tully had, you know, the Tully thing going. Um, but I don't know that, that he would have been given a chance today because just because of his size and his look, they would have just gone, ah, you know, he's... Just doesn't got a great body, and he's, you know, he's not spectacular. You know, I mean, all this stuff is basic. You know, but I mean, Tully had a thing going, but, but most of those guys, you know, I mean, by today's standards, the, most of it doesn't hold up. I mean, as far as great. Now, if you're into it, just to yeah, see but if it, you transplant some of those guys to today, it would be easier for them to have access to a better body. Oh, oh, oh! Of course, of course, and 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 also they would have seen these moves and would have known how to do these moves, and they would have, and many of them would have been able to do these moves. Yeah. This is from Power. This is a Randy Hale statement. Uh, There's not much in life that you can say is a sure thing, but one thing you can co always count on is that things change. Sometimes they change for the good, sometimes not so good. We all go through changes. I grew up with Memphis wrestling, and anyone who knows me will tell you that it's been my love, my passion, and my dream. Most kids don't get to grow up and live their dream. I feel very fortunate that I've been able to live my dream. Wrestling-wise, the happiest I ever was was April 18, 1998, when Power Pro Wrestling premiered on TV5 in Memphis. Before I started writing this letter, I watched... That very first show, and to this day, it gives me goosebumps. I'm very proud of the last three years of TV. I'm proud of the product, and I'm proud of the effort we've had from everybody involved in this company. I would have been very happy if Power Pro 
uh, wrestling would have continued operating like we have been operating forever. I would have been content to retire 30 years from now as the owner, founder, and president of Power Pro Wrestling. But like I said, things change. In April of 1998, I signed a three-year deal with TV5. I was very confident this contract would be renewed. However, this past Saturday after TV, I was informed by TV5 that the show would not be renewed, and this week's show would be the final episode of Power Pro Wrestling. The major reason given was due to financial reasons and insurance liability issues. It was not financially feasible to continue doing the show. I'll, I'll elaborate on that in just a second. Starting on April the 21st, TV5 will begin airing Best of Memphis Wrestling. So that means tapes of old shows. So they're not getting out of the wrestling business. That's an interesting one. As far as Power Pro Wrestling is concerned, let me say this. We worked hard to achieve our dream, and we're not going to sit back and go away. There are other options. We do have a plan. It won't be the same, but sometimes change is good. I'd like to thank everyone who supported Power Pro over the last three years. It's been a project a lot of people have worked hard for. It's been an experience that I will always cherish and remember. We'll probably have, by the way, this from Randy Hales. We will probably have Randy Hales on this show uh, probably within a two or three weeks anyway. I'm not sure exactly um, what day he actually had committed to do the show and not – having anything to do with this. It was just a time frame situation before he was going to do it. And uh, anyway, uh, what that tells me is that they are not giving up on wrestling. Now, there are two other companies, or actually neither of them are companies. There are two other people wanting to have, that have, um, what, 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 what basically happened with Memphis is this. Um, they were paying, it was the only um, station that I'm aware of, with the exception of uh, Viacom, I guess, um, that was actually paying, uh, you know, for the right to broadcast wrestling. I mean, it was the o only local station that was doing it. Most of them get it on a barter, and in a lot of cases, uh, you know, wrestling, syndicated wrestling, you, the company actually pays for the, the time. Um, but this one, because of the long history of, of huge ratings that TV5 has gotten from wrestling, the fact that Dave Brown, who's the most popular uh, newscaster, he's a local weatherman, but he's by far the most popular newscaster in the entire market, was part of the show. It's just been one of those things where they've paid for programming forever because the ratings are so high and it was tradition that they kept doing. And the, the people who were around during the heyday of Channel 5 Wrestling and, and, and all that are no longer with the station. It's just, station management changes. People from out of town came in. And, you know, to them it's like, what do we have this contract? We're paying like, you know, a couple of grand a week for wrestling. Are we supposed to get paid for wrestling? So when the contract ran out, I mean, that was basically the gist on that. And there's also, um, uh, this is kind of a weird one. There was an um, insurance situation in that they said that, that, um, that wrestling in that television studio was an insurance liability issue, which is funny because, as Brian, as you probably know, wrestling's been in that exact same studio with the exception of a one-year break since, like, 1977 or something. Yeah. So... So, but anyway, that's what happened in the and uh, he was after the TV yesterday, uh, Saturday. He was told, told, you know, one week notice, you're done next Saturday. And um, the a lot, probably a lot of people are going to go in because it's of that traditional time slot, trying to get it. There is a possibility um, that they will continue in the studio with another company, although highly unlikely. Um, I know that one of the proposals, uh, which is Corey Macklin, who's one of the TV announcers, has put together a proposal. And I don't know how they had a meeting last night. I don't know how the meeting went. And um, that proposal actually would have been to continue studio wrestling, although they would not get paid for it. They would have to pay for it themselves. Um, and the other proposal, which I don't know if it would be continue studio wrestling or send in tapes, was put in by Sid Udy, who lives in uh, West Memphis and has always wow. fashioned that he could be a booker and a promoter. And uh, you know, when knowing that the so contract was up. he got to take that up, next step in his career. You know, he broke his leg and he's 41 years old, so you know what I mean? Yep. It's not, uh, you know, so anyway, it's not the, not the worst thing. Anyway, uh, let's go Who to some more Sid of this. Who would Sid bring in? Um, that guy, that, that Johnny Rotten guy? Um, I don't know who else. Yeah, you know, hey, you know all those local guys are going to go wherever the TV is anyway. Yeah. So it'll be the same. It's going to be the same crew no matter what. Now, um, I know that that, uh, and I don't know which side or where he's aligned, but I do know that Jimmy Hart has talked to Jerry Lawler about, uh, you know, doing stuff in the studio with uh, Jerry Lawler and Hulk Hogan to set up Jerry Lawler Hulk Hogan matches. Hmm. Now I don't know if this will ever happen, but I know that that's. <laughs> I wonder if Hogan is aware of this. Actually, probably is if Jimmy's talking he about it. Oh, I'm sure he's aware of it. Oh, I, I, yeah. if, if I'm, hey, if I'm aware of it, and I'm aware of it from from many different people, Hogan's aware of Hogan it. Hogan is definitely aware of it. 
Yeah, of course he is. Anyway, uh, this is more, more of this. Even though ECW is filing for bankruptcy, will they still be able to sell and produce DVDs and home videos as a means to bring in future revenue that could pay off their debt? Um, what will probably happen, although there will be a lot of steps for this to happen, is I'm expecting WWF will get um, the uh, rights to do that stuff. Um, as I think the WWF will end up buying the videotape library of ECW. So at that point, they, you know, the WWF could put out tapes, but ECW won't get any of that. It wouldn't go towards paying the debt. Yeah, I don't think there will be no more. I don't think there will be any future things put out by ECW. But I mean, as far as like what's already out there now. Uh, they will be able to take in whatever revenue from stuff that's already out there to alleviate the debt, however little they, they can. I mean, like you know, some of the there's there's paper, there's significant amount of pay per view money due, and that will be, yeah. you know. But I mean, all that money coming in that's that's going to come in doesn't, you know, they're still going to end up. Uh, oh my God, you know, 4.7 million uh, less than than they owe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard some of those figures on the uh, bankruptcy filing. Might have been yeah. a little bit low, as far as what's owed to certain people. Oh, I'm sure they are. And it doesn't matter because none of them are going to see any. No, money, because 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 it, it's, it's, it's what it's what it's what Paul Heyman claims. What the people themselves claim obviously is going to be higher because you know all yeah. those guys never got paid for pay per views. Mm-hmm. You know, but then again, I mean, I I had seen contracts from ECW, and and the way it's worded is, you are not guaranteed money for pay per views. I mean, it's said that like you sort of you know there could be money for pay per views, but it's not guaranteed. So so it's not like he technically owes it. It's sort of like a bonus, and he just never paid anyone any bonuses. You know, that's yeah. why like a lot of these guys will will you know have like hugely different ideas of how much Paul owes them than Paul claims. But that's mm-hmm. because they probably didn't read their contract close enough, or maybe they you know, maybe maybe some of them are right too. I I mean, I, there's there's two sides to every story. But I know the contracts that I have seen that those that pay per view money is not guaranteed. You know, I mean, it's sort of like implied, but it's not guaranteed. Um, let's see. Uh, I just listened to the Archive Wrestling Observer Live with Max Payne and was curious to know if there's any plans for him to be back on the show once the movie comes out. Oh, when his movie comes out, he'll be if back on the show. If we wait for his movie to come out, he will never return to the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but he will be on the show again, I would I would presume, uh, long before that movie comes out. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do you think of this for King of the Ring? Rather than filling the tournament with all the mid-carters and hope to elevate someone, why not fill the tournament out with all the big names? Austin, Triple H, Undertaker, Kane, Benoit, Jericho, Angle, and Rock. Rock and then have someone elevated in the finals. And then imagine if Benoit went through Angle, Hunter, and Austin in one night and won the King of the Ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine yeah. that. Good one. Imagine that. Three former King of the Ring, three former World Maybe Champions. Jericho, too, huh? <laughs> that would set up a Benoit-Austin title match for the July pay-per-view, which will be... Uh, Jericho could go yeah. through X-Pac, Hunter, <laughs> and China and win the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and would uh, consider Benoit to be a serious contender since, yeah, so anyway, um, hey, they, they could do it. They can do anything they want. It's, it's up to them. You know, they're, they're hiring uh, new writers again. Yes, they that? are. Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny of all the places to look for a new writer. Hotjobs.com. I couldn't believe that. For all of you that, that. Uh, send us your booking ideas, please go to Hotjobs.com. Hotjobs.com. They're looking for and a you apply for your for own position in the desert. As a writer. There's clerical a writer. positions. A writer, Probably. yeah. Probably for WCW. That's right. You but could write I, for I, WCW. I'm, I'm guessing. Although, I mean, they go through writers really quick. It's a big burnout job, and they're always looking for new young writers. And they're, they're supposed to be young and funny. That's what they want. And and it would be good if they know wrestling, but obviously... <laughs> That's not a prerequisite. <laughs> it's not a prerequisite in some cases. Uh, let's see. I was reading the feedback, and I was wondering, where did this whole Chris Jericho thing get started? Uh, he came to the WWF and he had blonde hair, and that's where it got started. Uh, can you give us the names of some wrestlers who are definitely not going to be part of the new WCW? Um, as far as definitely not, I mean, Vampiro, Mike Modest, Chris Daniels, um, Luger, Bagwell, I would say, have a pretty bad chance. Um, who else is on the definite not list? Sid Vicious, I don't believe it'll take him. Kevin Nash. Yeah. Um, uh, any other definite knots? It's got to be Nails. Nice. <laughs> Nails, Bam Bam Bigelow, um, Shane Douglas. Um, he goes, I'm very curious about Jamie Noble. Well, I can tell you about Jamie Noble is, is that uh, he will be given a shot. I'm, I, I can't say 100%, but I can say 99%. And I'm sure, and I, I'll even 99.5%. Um, they're actually doing a, oh, I shouldn't talk about this, but they're, they're doing talent evaluations, a lot of that, uh, right around now. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about WCW Saturday Night with Shane McMahon? 
<laughs> this is from Scott Foy. How about WCW's? Get... Oh, did they already do Saturday Night Live? Okay, never mind. Yeah. Scott Foy, I can't get over those awful names on WF.com. It has to be a rib. Anyway, in addition to some other names, oh, he sent in some names yesterday. Here's a few more names. WCW Mid-Carters of Wrestling. <laughs> WCW Under New Management. That WCW show, WCW Damned, Shane the WWF Slayer, WCW The Final Chapter, a Connecticut Yankee in Ted Turner's court, and WWF 2 Wrestling Fan Zero. <laughs> and finally, keeping, actually, you know what, and keeping with TNN's brilliant marketing campaign, WCW Pop This. Actually, we got, last night, I got a, a, several emails for people suggesting, tongue-in-cheek, of course, the name of the show should be WCW Pop. Uh, let's see. How like WCW here? Damned? <laughs> really, that's a great name. <laughs> yeah. Who's funnier, William Regal or Kurt Angle? Oh. I say Regal. It's to me? Ah, Regal's funnier to me. It's close, huh? I, it is close. They're both really funny. I would go with Regal. Okay. Oh, that's where I went, too. Especially lately. Angle's had to do too much of the badass deal. And I don't want to complain about that, but... Regal's what was the last match you gave five stars to? Um, I think that that was Kawada and Masafuchi against Yuji Nagata and Takashi Izuka from the New Japan pay-per-view in December. Now, this is from Sean, who says, Brian, your response to Sarah's email was incredible. Keep it up. Oh, thanks. Okay. Rank these guys from best to worst. Booby Ray, Sakosa, Super Crazy. Uh, from best to worst... Okay, worst is Sakosis right now. And he's pretty damn good after watching that match he just had Friday night. Um, Hoobie's the most talented for sure of the four. And Ray and Crazy, uh, you know, Crazy's not as banged up as Ray, but I think Ray, when it comes to, like, uh, you know, um, comebacks and, and actual work, being is, a baby is better. Than, face. Yeah, being a baby face, I think he's better than Crazy. So I say Hoobie, Ray, Super Crazy, and Sakosis, but they're, they all can be really, really good uh, when they're on. In fact, awesome when they're on, all of them. Uh, let's see. Who from Ohio Valley Wrestling has WWF developmental deals? Actually, most, uh, probably two thirds of the guys there, if not mm -hmm. more. Almost the whole crew, um, except for some of the local guys. Who trained Buff Bagwell? Uh, God, you know, was that Jody Hamilton? Maybe I, I really don't know. No, I, I have a quick question though. Is Sheldon uh, signed to a WWF developmental deal? Oh yeah, of course. Well, then that might be why maybe he might not, not after be on the today. program. Oh, he's, he's not allowed I've on the been, program. I've been trying to, I've been trying to get in touch with him, and I haven't heard back from him. So, oh, I hope he's there. What about Chris Ford? Can we get him? He just had the dark match. Actually, no, they, so, until, he's, until he signed, until um, if they sign him to a contract like uh, next week, no. But until they sign him, he, he can come. Yeah, because we had we had Nova on. Yeah, Nova did dark right. matches. Uh, okay, what are his chances of who? Who? What are Buff Bagwell's chances of sticking around with WWF or WCW? Not good. Slim. Yeah. Uh, let's see. okay, we're going to go one more and we'll go to a break. I heard that Vince McMahon is going to ship all his heavyweights to WCW and make WWF one big light heavyweight division. Oh, yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> this is from Sanu, who goes, instead of turning Austin, they should have turned Jericho on Austin. It would have been a fresh program with Austin's face, and Jericho's getting boring as a face. They should turn him eel. They could have done that. I, you know, I mean, I've been saying they should turn Jericho for a long time, but now they're so weak on the babyface side that they probably... Shouldn't, but he is stale as a babyface. Um, yeah, but there's no point know, of would, him being a babyface unless he's going to be a top babyface because that's what they're short on. Yeah, they have no intention well, of pushing him as a top babyface. Just turn him heel. Yeah, that's true. If they're not, if they're really not going to give him any chance, that's true. Uh, let's see, are Joey Matthews and Christian York going to start right away with WF to be sent to Memphis or OVW? I would guess they're going to be sent to Memphis. Uh, let's see, how did the WF go about airing SummerSlam '92 in the United States? Um, I don't get that. They just did. Could well, this is from uh, the UK. Yeah. Yeah, so? So he's wondering about the time delay. Oh, they, t they aired it on tape delay. They aired like 17 hours late, is what they did. Uh, that is could your answer. London be Okay, could London be ruled out as a possibility for WrestleMania 18? Um, yeah, pretty much. They're what not doing a WrestleMania on tape delay. No. No, especially not in this day and age, with the yeah. internet and everything. They really won't. Because you've got to remember, 92... Very, you know, really, it was pretty darn hard to get those results before the show. Um, and in fact, you know what's funny is I got the results before the show, and they were they were all wrong. So what did it matter? <laughs> that's how someone bad. Someone said you fake results. No, 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 no. Someone who was there, and they just, you know, like they forgot. You know, there was a DQ finish, and they didn't know which guy went, went over. Things like that. 
<laughs> but I mean, everyone had. Um, did you do it for the hotline or something? Uh, prob. I don't know if I did the hotline by '92. I don't. I think it. I don't remember when I started doing the hotline. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. But anyway, I just think. Um, what was? Actually, I know I did the hotline. What am I saying? Definitely had a hotline. No, I don't. Forget this. I don't think I did. <laughs> anyway, it's '92. I don't remember. It's like ten years ago, and it was just like one card. But I do remember that in the War of Savage. different it was ten years ago. Ten years ago, SummerSlam could have aired on tape delay, and nobody would have known. And nobody knew. That's were. right. And you know there what? There's no hotline. Well, can I nothing. tell you something? On the the original WrestleMania, the first WrestleMania, it aired on a three-hour tape delay in the, on the West Coast, and they pretended it was live, and nobody knew the difference. And it was already over when we when, when we when we started it. And the second WrestleMania, the um the New York and Chicago aired on tape delay on the West Coast. We got L.A. live, like like the rest of the country got. New York, I think it was New York, Chicago, L.A., okay, like, and we on the West Coast got L.A., L.A., New York, Chicago, was it in that order? I think, I think it was L.A., Chicago, New York, maybe. I don't even remember now. And and it was funny because they were, like, flipping over, you know, like they would have different things said, so it was, there was actually problems in doing it that way, which is one of the reasons, by the way, why they've never done a, a three-city WrestleMania again, because it was just, it, was, it wasn't a total mess, but... It wasn't pretty good either. And then look like ten years later, Pride results up on the website pretty much five minutes after each match takes place. You can watch Abu Dhabi. Five minutes. Five, five minutes. minutes. I, had computer. I, I had that Pride stuff up, you know, literally like a minute after yeah. the finish of every match. I mean, I was up there in the middle of rounds updating that thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But it's going to be like ten years down the road. Oh, we'll be able to watch everything live that we want. We'll have a, z a zillion stations. And we'll be watching. Um, I mean, I've been still Except waiting. Me, the I'll still have uh, thirty. <laughs> no, but we'll be. You know, we'll in be fact, by then I might have ten. <laughs> you'll probably like, try to. <laughs> you'll try to fix your box, and you won't have any. I know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, have you ever thought of being a WF Booker? I can't say I've never thought of it, but I've never thought of it for more than about five minutes. Uh, this is from Dustin, who says, on his show today, Eddie Goldman said that Pride was the most corrupt martial arts organization in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie doesn't like Pride. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you agree with that statement? Um, it depends on what you mean by corrupt. I and mean, it's corrupt. not about fixing matches and stuff like that. It probably is the most corrupt martial arts organization in the world. Yeah, because they do work matches. Yeah. But, you know, it's a question like, worked or fixed? You know, it's like, to me, it's like, it's, it's just like, you know, to me, to me, Pride is just another form of pro wrestling because it's, they're out there trying to draw wrestling fans, not martial arts fans. That's why they use wrestlers, and they got to protect the wrestlers because if they, you know, if they got beaten, thrashed really bad, nobody would want to see them anymore. So it's it's just a pro wrestling organization that does a lot of real matches. It, it, it was really what it is. It's not a, I mean, it is a martial arts organization that does fake matches. Also, it's but it's both. It's not. It's like it's neither fish nor foul. So it's a real. It's so is that bad? I mean, maybe it's good that, that it's like the only professional wrestling organization that actually has real matches, and it's the least corrupt professional wrestling organization. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone gets Although paid. Although it's, it's, it's probably not that either, though. Uh, let's see. Last night I, send, I attended the IFC show. It was a great show. If you're ever in Central California, you can catch IFC. I highly recommend it. They're great shows. Um, yeah, that's usually in, if it was in midweek, then um, it's going to be pretty tough for me to go. But Fresno's not that, that far. I mean, I remember... Um, you know when they had the fights in Fresno one night, I don't remember what it, what, what it was, but um, we had like they had fights in Fresno and a whole bunch of guys were fighting, and they came over to my house like at four in the morning that night. You know, it's like I think they called from Fresno and said we'll be over in like three hours to watch like fight videos. So I was like sleep on the couch, and then at four in the morning the bell rings and there's all these fighters. The dog starts like, barking. The dog starts barking. Yeah, I remember that. That was quite a night. Uh, why did WCW let so many wrestlers use their real names and not give them gimmicks so they could protect the characters they made? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Does WWF own the rights to the Sting character? Now, Steve Warden does, if, if I'm correct, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and what does Noah mean? It's the guy with the, the boat, right? Seriously. Yeah. Um, let's see. What the hell is the WWF doing? The Hardy Boys in an angle with Austin and Triple H. What about HBK? WF has sucked lately. Hey, HBK, don't blame the WF for him. He'd be uh, right there, but he screwed up. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. 
Uh, Brian asked about Jericho injuring people. What about potatoing China? And then guys get, got upset about it because he went backstage and wouldn't apologize. Is that true? Is that true? I never heard the story about him not going back and apologizing. I never he gave her a black eye. There's a lot of people that get black eyes in wrestling. Vince gave his own son a black eye. I've got a black it. eye. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. How can you have it a wrestling match and it never get a black time. eye? Yeah. Regal, Regal got one from Al Snow, right? Yeah, Regal got one from Al Snow. Huge black eye. Yeah. Vince got one from Bret Hart. Oh. Well. Oh, I know. That doesn't count. Bret was That's stiff. Just, yeah. I'm 16, and I saw Bash of the Beach in 1989 live. I've been watching wrestling ever since. Uh, I think I'm one of the select few wrestling fans my age like that. So he saw it live, so he was five years old. Well, still a hell of a show. That was a hell of a show, though. Uh, da, 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 da. I saw it when he was five, and he was still a fan afterwards? That was a great show. Why wouldn't you still be a fan after that show? Which, which if every show? show was like that, if every show was like that Bash show in 89... There would be much oh, more wrestling. Oh, okay, fans. sorry, uh, sorry, never mind. You were thinking, thinking Bash of 91? I was, I, was, I was thinking about the uh, Beach Show. Oh, yeah, well, I can see that. Brian, you know, I, I we never talked about this, okay? Um, were you riding waves during the Sting and Ming match? I think I saw that match. Okay, I was riding waves, so maybe that wasn't it. Cause people, are, people are, like, sure that we've actually met. And I was we thinking, you know, there is met. a possibility. No, I, think I, may have Dave, I think I may have given Dave a flyer. For the newsletter at that beach, okay, but I, I would not I have known get, who he was at the time. Okay, I did get a flyer for your newsletter at that beach. Absolutely but I wasn't did. the only person giving those things out. I had so lackeys I know, with me. Okay, well, I may have met a lackey then. Uh, We've never see. met. Why is it hard to believe? Why would we lie about that? Because of the one day no, that I lied that I was at your house? <laughs> Don't worry. He did it again. Vince Russo isn't going to wow. He swerved as he's booking Noah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> he's it's from Harry Simon, who's coming up with uh, the Let's Screw with Bret Hart trivia. Uh -oh. oh, my God. He goes, am I right in thinking Barry Windham was one of the wrestlers who boycotted the morning after Montreal Raw? No, I Barry Windham. The only guy I think who did was Mick Foley. Wasn't that right? And Wasn't Owen Hart? Mick Foley and one other guy? I thought one other guy did. Owen Hart. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone else. Nightheart was there. So there was about, uh, This was, was kind of like the WCW did. There was about 16 million people on Sunday night. Oh, everyone. Boycott. Everyone on Monday morning. Everyone on Monday morning <laughs> after that match was, was not going to go. But you know what? It, you know, actually what happened was a lot of them called up Brett and said, like, you know, don't, you know, we're not going to go. And he told every one of them, go. You know, don't give him an excuse to fire you. So, yeah. so I mean... The only one, and I mean, he told that to Foley too, but Foley still wouldn't go, and you know, so those were, those were the only two who didn't go. Vince um, would have been an idiot to fire anybody, though. Think of, they could start WCW could have done the invasion. Well, they wouldn't have because they screwed up, but they could have done the invasion all over again. Well, they tried with Rick, with Rick Rude and Davy Boy and Neidhart. They got them all, and boy, that. Although I will not blame ever. I will never blame them for um, WCW for not pushing Davy Boy and Neidhart because they were absolutely unpushable at that time. Yes. Uh, let's see. What is the new WCW going to be like if the, none of the top stars get a buyout? Time will tell. We don't know. Uh, what did you think of the Vince Brusso skit on the Torch? I actually I haven't read anything on the Torch website in, like, months, but Bruce Mitchell, like, asked me to read that, so I did. And actually, I read everything on the Torch website last night <laughs> since I was already up there. But um, it, was real, it was very funny. Um, can you imagine what a healthy and happy Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels would add to the world of wrestling today? Yeah, you know what? The happy and healthy Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, I would enjoy wrestling a lot. Because those guys were great. Uh, let's see. This was the exact quote, by the way, from... God, we're talking about Russo again. Do you know what the Miss WCW contest has badly produced what it was? Beat Raw every minute for seven minutes when they were head-to-head, -head, and the contest ran smack up against the return of Steve Austin. Amazing, isn't it? So that's the exact quote. So the thing we were told yesterday was untrue. Uh, let's see, would it be easier for someone to start up a promotion on another English-speaking country and then get television and bring it to the United States? No, we're not good at accepting foreign products compared to other countries. Uh, what feud was fl fl the Funk Briscoe or Flair Steamboat for the 90s? Uh, Miss Uh, let's see, I just want to say I really enjoyed the Who Wants to Beat the Crap Out of Shawn Michaels trivia. Uh, that guy got Ken some hate too, I'll have to put that up. What? Harry? For that trivia, yeah. some people were oh, very yeah. angry about that. Uh, even the, 
even the idea of creating that. What the Michaels one? The Michaels one yeah. was hilarious. That was hilarious. well, I didn't like it. Why? Because he was Tell insulting Shawn Michaels. Yeah, but it's the greatest all wrestler of all time. It's all tongue in cheek. So I mean, well, he's not the greatest wrestler of all time. I think time, it's our he... readership. You know how they are about Shawn Michaels. I shouldn't say that, but you know, no, same no, thing no, with no, no. Wait, all the young Sean's... guys on the show that come on and you know, I okay, like Michaels. Even if Shawn's the greatest wrestler of all time, that doesn't mean you you can't tell jokes. That's true. Does it? People were offended, especially when they're all true. I mean, it's it's like it's not like I know that's the whole thing. I mean, you, you you didn't make that up. I mean, hey, you know, it's like you know, hey, none of us ever say Shawn Michaels was a bad wrestler. You know, I mean, even the people who hate his guts the worst can never say that because then you're just like branded idiot. You know what I mean? If you say something exactly. stupid as that. Okay, this is to take it one step further. This is from Richard Sullivan. Dory Funk Jr. and Jack Briscoe wrestling for the Mid Atlantic title in 1983 were actually better matches than the Funk Briscoe NWA title classics of 10 years earlier, even though both were past their prime by that time, and, would, and neither was one of the top 10 workers in the world by that point. I would compare it to the Wright brothers flying a DC 9 or a 747 and doing a good job at it, but still not having the reflexes of a younger pilot with more experience flying a modern aircraft. Uh, let's see. Any chance of having Dusty Rhodes on the show soon? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, Let's see. Well, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Jack in Nevada. Jack, what's going on? Not much, Dave. First time caller, long time listener, though. Oh, I thank just you. want to say that, Brian, I enjoy your sense of humor a whole lot. You make this oh, show, thanks. in my opinion. Wow. I think so, too. Anyways, I wanted to um, ask you what you thought of WCW's chances if they don't get any of these guys that are tied up in these Time Warner contracts. You know, like Booker T and DDP and Goldberg, whatnot. Well, they're going to probably I think end up can't even say it right now. I think it's going to take like three weeks of TV because if three weeks of TV go by, they don't have any of those guys, and uh, fans are chanting their name, the ratings are low. I'm sure they'll do something. Because I sent in a letter, you know, basically talking about you know Kidman and Awesome and a guy like Lance Storm who could easily be like I think the next next Bret Hart. You know, do you think they could you know headline? No, not yet. I mean, now, if they worked with headliners and had really great matches in due time, I think they could, but right off the bat, absolutely not. They're not, they're not over enough uh, for, for people to accept them as headliners. Do you think, though, um, that like, guys like Three Count and the uh, Jung Dragons could pull off the TLC kind of matches we're seeing now as far as tag teams go? Oh, we've already seen them do it. Remember they did it at, at Starcade or whatever? They had, their, their match was, was tremendous. And they'd yeah, actually get the push, you know. With Vince they, them. And then They'll have a, a better chance of getting a push now than they did then. That's what I would think. Yeah, they will because there's not as much. There's, there's not. Well, first of all, there's nobody uh, on top to hold anyone down, so everyone sort of got a chance. And also, the political structures greatly changed, and for the better too. Plus, if anything, with the way the TV is set up now, with no competition, they're doing so many replays and everything like that. That if there's a tremendous match, you know, we'll see a ton of it on the next show. Just replays and you know what's interesting? Now, now, here's an interesting one. If somebody went out there and just had this killer match on Saturday night, would they show us clips on Monday? Because they got yeah, to use money. If they don't use Monday to drive Saturday and they really try to keep them that separate, um, it's going to be tough. They got to use Monday to drive the Monday and Thursday to drive Saturday, at least at the beginning. Well, you know, not even at the beginning. Always. You know. Maybe they could do like the old. Uh, remember the NWO used to do those deals where they'd uh, pay for commercial time or whatever. They'll have to do something like that, because they can't just have Jim Ross go, well, let's take a look at what happened on uh, uh, WCW Hard on this past Saturday night with uh, Young Dragons. WCW They'll have to do a deal where, you know, Shane McMahon <laughs> buys commercial time and airs a commercial, and then they're back to Raw again. Well, maybe, Jim Ross maybe ignores Linda, it. Maybe Linda just makes a ruling. I'm the CEO, and I'm giving them, like, ten minutes of time to promote their product every week. Yeah, it has to be something like that. They just can't have Ross talk about it. But they got it. They they've got to drive it. I mean, hey, they use their, their they, they they try and it hasn't really succeeded. But they try to use Raw and SmackDown to drive a XFL. I mean, yeah, but week? XFL isn't supposed to be considered like a rival organization. Yeah. Well, I mean, they could just do the Linda McMahon thing. I said it's not a problem. Yeah. Yep. This is. Did you hear anything about the house show match last night with Jerry Lynn Crash, Holly, and Dean Malenko? My cousin told me it was spectacular. I just heard that. That's all I've heard. Uh, let me see. Uh, with such a lack of wrestling shows nowadays, uh, I've been forced to dig into my tape collection to find entertainment. Watching old tapes, several questions spring to mind. Any answer would be appreciated. Everybody always lists Ric Flair's greatest opponent as Ricky Steamboat or Sting. 
Nobody says Sting. I don't think anyone says Sting that. except Ric Flair and the worst promo. Flair said on that last show, just because he was building up a match, everyone always says Ricky Steamboat. After rewatching several of his matches with Ronnie Garvin, I have to say Ronnie Garvin should be up on any list of his best opponents. Yeah, Ronnie Garvin and Ric Flair had a different kind of match. They just beat the hell out of each other, and they were great matches. Almost all of their matches were awesome. I don't think he was a good choice as NWA champion. No, he was a horrible choice, actually. In Flair's rematch, after losing the title, the crowd cheered for him way more than Garvin. Yeah, t- yeah, absolutely. Can you explain who was the booker that gave Garvin the NWA title and the reason he was picked for the spot? The booker was Dusty Rhodes, and maybe we'll get Dusty on and give the answer. I think that you know what it was was that um, <laughs> it was Starcade coming up, and they really didn't have a program. Remember for when Dusty play. asked, "What's the Dusty finish?" <laughs> well, that was a classic. But um, <laughs> when when uh, the you know they were they were building up the Starcade in 1987 on pay per view, which they ended up barely getting on pay per view, but that's another story. The um, they were just looking for a quickie title switch for Flair, and I think that they didn't want to beat any of the, they, like Dusty was a top baby face, Nikita, Koloff was around, I forget who else was around, but um, they had a list, and I think that they just didn't want Flair to beat anyone clean, but Ronnie Garvin, they figured he could beat clean, and he was like number seven baby face at the time, but him and Flair did have a really big, you know, good program of matches, so it wasn't, it wasn't like he was totally undeserving in people's eyes, I mean, so, so they went with Ronnie Garvin, and the crowd, you know, everyone loved Ronnie Garvin when he was wrestling Ric Flair, until he beat Ric Flair, and the minute they saw Ronnie Garvin with that world belt, with Ric Flair's belt, and they realized this guy is no Ric Flair, and he got booed every night, everywhere. Um, <laughs> and they act, it, it was so bad, they actually stopped doing world title matches after a week into that reign, because, you know, like, like they had him defend against like Ivan Koloff and Big Bubba Rogers, because they knew that he couldn't draw as a main eventer. And, and actually, it was a really bad situation, because the ratings in that quarter... Um, dropped 25% on WCW. I, it was, I don't know if it was called Saturday Night. It was called World Championship Wrestling then. When they switched the belt from Flair to Ronnie Garvin. I mean, that's what the belt meant in those days. When the belt was on the wrong guy, people wouldn't watch wrestling and people wouldn't pay for tickets. And attendance went down. Everything went down. Although the Starcade match, you know, in Chicago was a sellout and Flair got it back. Uh, let's see. Where, where do we have? Uh, what do, you, do you remember what you thought of those matches? I mean, the matches were very good, no doubt. How come Jimmy Snook and Bob Orton didn't have matches in the first WrestleMania? Uh, I think they couldn't trust Sn- Snook and Bob Orton was doing a broken arm gimmick. I don't remember if he was hurt. I think he may have been hurt at one point. They were serving as glorified managers of the main event, but they were very good workers and really over. I don't understand why they didn't have a match on the card. I think they didn't want to make that main event into a six-man tag. Uh, might have been part of it, too. Watching old cr- world-class tapes is really sad. Yeah, because everybody in that promotion, and not just the Von Erichs. When you watch those old world-class tapes, I mean, the ring announcer, the everyone's dead. The referee, you know, it's like, it's really, okay. I loved, okay, okay. It's hard to see the Von Erichs not be reminded of the dark cloud around that name. I heard a story that Fritz Von Erich sold 8x10 promo photos of David and Mike at their funerals. Have you heard the story? That is not true. Um, what it was was um, at, I was at the, the, and this is actually something that the family has denied, but it is true because I was at the show at the David Von Erich uh, Parade of Champions, which was a wrestling show in April, which was about two or so months after David Von Erich died. It was, in fact, it was a show we talked about a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago with Ric Flair and Kerry, where Kerry won the title. They were selling photos of David at that show, which I thought, when I was there, I was going like, this is kind of weird. And people were buying them like crazy. But uh, they did not sell photos of him at the funeral. That is not true. Uh, let's start with Wes. Wes, what's up? Hey, guys, how's it going? Going really good. The thing about Ronnie Garvin, though, back in 87, they kind of built him up that whole year with the Jim Cornette, the fireball incident. And then uh, during the summer, Gar- Jimmy and Flair had that pr- program ever precious, and then he came and knocked him out in the pool. So, And they did give him a full year buildup. Yeah, he just wasn't the guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy actually, that's, that showed how good Ric Flair was. Ric Flair even got decent matches out of Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy <laughs> was terrible then. I mean, Jimmy had a, had a good act, but, I mean, God, he didn't do nothing in the ring by then. Yeah. Also, I wanted to ask you in terms of the, going back to that Flair final interview on 9 when he brought up Vince McMahon Sr., I thought, though, when Buddy Rogers left, I thought they were out of the NWA then. Okay, here's the deal. They were back um, in briefly. That well, was more than briefly. No, what happened was in 63, they were out of the NWA until, I'm thinking, 72. The whole reign of Bruno San Martino the first time, they called him World Heavyweight Champion. They were not members of the NWA. And then the NWA got really strong, and um, you know Mushnick got Vince Sr. into the NWA. 
71, 72, was when Dory Funk Jr. was world champion, I remember. And then Vince Sr. remained in the NWA from 72 until, I'm guessing, 82 when he turned the promotion over to Jr. And, you know, Jr. went against everyone. So so during that, in 81, Vince, Vince Sr. was in the NWA and, and probably had a hand in deciding the champion, even though... You know, Vince Senior almost never booked the NWA champion. I mean, it's you yeah, that's why it's one. so confusing. I, you know, I don't ever recall looking at any old results or seeing an NWA. Champion. Yeah, Ray, Ray, Race defended the title a couple of times in, in um, WWF cities. I mean, and there were some Race, Race Dusty Rhodes, Race Bob Backlund title versus title matches at the Garden, but very rare. And um, but if you look at the programs from Madison Square Garden and and some of the other arenas in the WWF, they would actually list, like, Bob Backlund as WWF champion and Harley Race as world champion, even though Harley never actually, or almost never, would appear. Yeah. I appreciate that. I was kind of a bit confused on that. Also, uh, in regards to the WCW and everything, well, I don't particularly like how they've done it so far, but, I mean, with Shane McMahon in particular, I mean, with the whole thing back on Raw a couple of weeks ago at WWF New York, I mean, you know, it just didn't have the same, considering they own it, they would have kicked him out of the building. But considering that, you know, I just didn't think it had the same impact as when Scott Hall came down on Nitro. But, you know, that time, and, you know, when Nash came out the next week and shoved, you know, the, the guy running the company, Eric Bischoff, down it. But, I mean, did, did y'all view that the same way, or is that just me, maybe? Uh, no, know? the other one was I more dramatic. It's more because in, like, the last six years, there's just so much more information about wrestling out, and everybody knew. I mean, everybody who was really following it knew that this was going to happen and that there was going to be some sort of angle when it did. But, I mean, I think that casual fans that watched that, like, you know, reaction that we got from people that were there at Nitro when it happened, it was like they're just, their jaw dropped when Vince appeared at the beginning of Nitro. And I think that for a lot of casual fans, that's how it was, but... I mean, for me, it was like, you know, it was just nothing. I mean, it was something, but as far as, like, a big angle, I just knew it was a big angle because of what it was, but it didn't really strike me as, like, the Scott Hall thing did. Well, I mean, it's, you know, the whole, we just don't know because it's all how it plays out. Yeah. And, you know, we haven't even seen the first TV. They haven't even planned the first TV. I mean, it's, this, is, this is a work in progress, and that's a very dangerous term because the last work in progress... <laughs> You know, WCW's been a work in progress for years, yeah, for years now, unfortunately. I mean, it's going to depend on how the casual fan looks at it. I mean, if the casual fan buys it, it'll be just fine, but if they don't, it won't. It doesn't yeah. matter what, like, the 2% of people that know everything that's going on think about it. Yeah, I, do you think that maybe he purchased it? Do you think he was surprised Bischoff didn't get TV? Because, I mean, I'm trying, the only reasons he would have done it would be to do it in interpromotional and with not having the big names, obviously it's going to be hard. And the other reason would be to keep, you know, these the talent, the 24 they got, and some of the other guys away from Bischoff. Did that enter his mind? You think? No, I don't think so because I think that they obviously, I think they knew the television landscape when they went. I mean, when they when they signed, I mean, when they started negotiating for it, okay, they didn't know that Bischoff was going to strike out looking for TV. But when they signed the contract, Bischoff had already struck out. So so. You know, when they made the and decision, the fact, the the fact that they were negotiating before the shows got canceled, really kind of tells you something about what Vince knew, or maybe what Vince yeah, had that the shows were going to get canceled. Yeah, because if the shows never got canceled, why he would they be take negotiating? It. Because they yeah, knew he couldn't that, take it. He couldn't yeah, take it. So something must have been up there. So, so Vince McMahon may have had a hand in those things being canceled. In that, that was the only way he would take it. It also tells me that they really didn't want to sell it to Fusion. Um, even though they made that big announcement, and they did that press conference, and you know said that like the deal's just about done, which you know Fusion didn't even want that press conference. That was Brad Siegel. But then mm-hmm. when Brad Siegel went to um, you know the WWF, and you know when those negotiations reopened, I mean I know you know it's funny because think you know you get told things and you just kind of they go through your head, and then a couple weeks later you start thinking about things that you'd heard, and one of the things I heard was that um, so what Stuart Snyder had been told. This is before, way before the fusion thing fell apart, and any of that news came out. That the um, people who were negotiating, you know, from 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 the uh, Time Warner side, had told Stuart Snyder that they were not going to sell to Fusion, and that's why they were opening up negotiations to WWF. And you know, I why you know, would it really matter who they sold to, though? I think that they felt that you know, because the fusion deal. I mean, you've seen the deal. It was it was a certain amount of money. Not a big amount of money up front. It was like five million up front, and then two million oh, every yeah, year. Oh, yeah, payment deal. 
the payment deal, and I think that they felt that after um, you know after one year they'd never get any money, and that these guys would go bankrupt on their air. And the other way, you know, at least hey, at least they got wrestling's the money up gone. Front. Wrestling's gone, and we, we but well, even if it's not up all up front, the whole point is, is you know, the WWF's it's not coming out of the business. WWF, which isn't going to die in a year. Yeah. yeah, or two. Yeah, yeah, they're getting all their they're getting all their money, and you know, and and also with with fusions. Um, TBS was going to maintain um, a stock in the company, so they would be on the hook for God knows what. And I think they just wanted this thing gone. And with WWF, they sold it 100. percent They didn't sell 87 percent, like was the deal to Fusion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my last question was: Is there any word on when maybe that MattRats.com promotion might be on TV? I know on their website they've got some poll that you, <laughs> you can vote for what station. Some of them are laughable, like ESPN's on <laughs> one of them. The ones, but uh, have you heard anything when they might in terms of... Is that how easy it is? No. You know they should vote? They should vote for uh, NBC in prime time on Thursday <laughs> after Friends. Yeah, why not? <laughs> they got to vote close. for something. Yeah. I mean, as, as the big competition for Survivor. So you don't know when... No, they don't have any TV deals. They're so far from that. I don't think there's going to be any TV soon. And you don't think... I mean, if Bischoff couldn't get it with Fox, you know... Yeah, take what Matt does it tell you? What, yeah. what, 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 what's Matt Rats going to get? Yeah. So I guess they'll be doing webcams. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of webcams. You know what, though? If they have, um, what the hell is Jason Hervey's company? Man, yeah, man, they have Handley behind them. That webcast may last for a while. So, But if, don't expect if they're, if they're willing to. And you know, the thing is, if there was a way, you know. I mean, who knows what technology is going to be in 5, 10 years? Yeah, down, down the road, it may not be a big deal to have it on the Internet because everyone may have, like, uh, little Internet TVs or whatever. You know, who knows how it's going to happen. But as far as, like, yeah, and, TV and, and, and like and, that, uh, cable, cable TV. Yeah, you'll get the no stuff way. on demand and you'll get, like, yeah, you know, I mean, who, who knows where technology is going to be. Of course, it's not going to be like this next year, though. No, they're probably out of business by then. Well, I appreciate the comments, guys. Thanks. Uh, this is from Mike who says, didn't Kane boycott the next day after the Bret Hart incident? No, he did not. Uh, this is uh, this is the things that are being said today in the dressing room about Chris Jericho. I'm not going to say who said them. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey Vince, WCW needs someone really charismatic like Chris Jericho. He's not getting enough of a chance here. Hey Vince, I think Chris Jericho should be in another program with Chris Benoit. Hey Vince, Jericho doesn't need to be pushed that one's anymore. True. He, yeah, I know. Hey Vince, Jericho doesn't need to be pushed anymore. He's too old. He should help elevate the up and coming young stars like X Pac and China. <laughs> hey Vince, if there's anyone in our company who can get a good match out of Kane or the Big Show, it's Chris Jericho. <laughs> hey Vince, Chris Jericho needs more television time. We should make him host Sunday Night Heat. And hey Vince, Chris Jericho hurts people in the ring. China wouldn't lie about anything. Speaking All of right. people hurting people in the ring, China is brutal. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This this is actually I know this is tongue in cheek, but I got to read it anyway. This is like someone who's, oh, I bet Dave's not going to, you know, I want Dave to read this and it sounds stupid, but it's just too funny for me. Because I'm 13 years old, so I'm not familiar with Japanese wrestling. Is this champion carnival thing I read so much take place at an actual carnival? The answer to that is no. Uh, let's see. Uh, how good a worker is Brian? A lot better than you think. <laughs> he's, he's a very good independent worker. If uh, Fox wants to get lower ratings than the XFL, they could air an hour-long special like when animals attack. <laughs> <laughs> they could use the best of, as if there's ever anything good came out of that show. Um, they could they could hear clips of uh, Vince Russo's WCW tenure ca- called "When Work Shoots Go Bad." <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, as for pushing uh, the WCW Saturday Night Show on Monday, why not have Shane steal television time with a one or two minute pirate satellite feed? This would also push the Vince Shane storyline, promote the WCW product at the same time. Uh, you know what I thought was kind of you know I thought there were two good things they've done so far. The first one was Monday when Jim Ross is in the room with Vince McMahon and he goes, "Yes, I've also talked to my lawyer." And he goes, um, "If you fire me, I may go work for your son Shane in WCW." And everyone popped huge. And it was like even if he never goes now, at least Jim Ross saying that is giving some legitimacy to WCW, like it is a viable alternative because that's what they need to do. I mean, it's not like Jim Ross would say, or like Vince would go, if I fire you, you're going to have to go to WCW, and Ross goes, oh, my God, no, not that. You know, yeah. he's actually putting it over as something that's that's okay. And then uh, I completely forgot what the other thing was. No, that's good, though. That's good. Because I have a different opinion from most of your listeners. Bret Hart, I feel, is a better wrestler than Shawn Michaels. 
I mean, I think everybody would say that Bret Hart was a technically better wrestler than Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was the more spectacular of the two. I mean, as far as which one you think was better, it's a matter of taste. Um, it bothers me that he isn't as highly regarded. Um, in some ways, he's more highly regarded. In some ways, he's not. If Bret had been an ungrateful, pig-headed prima donna like Shawn Michaels, he could have bailed on Vince with a WWF belt. In the words of Kurt Angle, Shawn has intensity and intelligence. I don't know if he has intelligence. He definitely has intensity. But he lacks integrity. <laughs> He wouldn't be the only one. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, you know, the other thing was um, SmackDown, when Vince is talking about, you know, I don't have Shane under contract, and he has that concerned look on his face, and I thought, Vince is going to be able to reenact everything that happened in 1996 when he suddenly realized, you know, I didn't have Lex Luger under contract. You know, I didn't have Medusa under contract, and so on, is guys jump ship. Well, no, Medusa, Medusa was fired. Oh, that's right, she was fired. Medusa was fired and then she showed up on the other show. I mean, that wasn't, Medusa didn't jump. She got fired first. Um, um, Luger, he had under contract, there was just a loophole. And I don't know what the loophole was, but obviously there was one because he was telling, you know, he was going to sue Luger. Was he under contract? I thought it was oh, something Luger like was his definitely... contract expired like Saturday or something. No, Luger was under contract, but there was some loophole in the contract that Luger's lawyer got him out of on some technicality that they didn't, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was a, that was a contract technicality. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, let's see, okay, uh, you mentioned that the ring announcer for World Class was dead, I think that was Ralph Pulley, how did he die? I think it was AIDS, how did Rick Stewart die? I think that was AIDS too, I could be wrong on both cases, um, that's how I, Rick Stewart I'm pretty sure that that's how, I'm pretty much sure, I think Ralph Pulley too, I think they both died of AIDS, uh, what is the relationship between Phil Mushnick and this Mushnick guy you were talking about who was friends with Vince Sr.? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I heard Billy Gunn is trying to buy out Road Dog for two hours and use him sparingly for five minutes a month so he can carry his ass again. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stan Chavez, I just went back and watched The Great American Bash of 1989 and 1996. 1989 was so great. Then I got to 1996. I remember liking the show more when it aired. The show wasn't as good as I thought. The football player stuff was stupid. Actually, it was great that night. Benoit Sullivan was really cool, and the post-match angle with Arn Anderson tore down the house. Ray and Dean Malenko was so goddamn good. The funny thing was they spent three-quarters of the match on the mat. The Giant versus Lex Luger was awful. Page against Bagwell was weak. Big Bubba was partially sh and a partially shaved John Tenta was god-awful. Conan and Elgato was pathetic. The Steiners against Fire and Ice was the Steiners' worst match ever. I think you need to take that paper off the best list ever. The promos on the show back Hold on. Was... What happened with John Tenta again? Why did he only shave half his head? I vaguely remember this. Um, they Because he wanted everyone to know how humiliated he was. I forget. There was a reason. Um, the promos on that show backstage were horrible. I thought that I was in a time warp, and I didn't realize how much better the promos actually got. Arn Anderson was in top form, though. Uh, let's see. Are we going to get Tenta on this show? I never heard. I don't know. I think I sent the info to uh, Al. I'm not sure if I did, though. I did send an email and never got a response. Okay. okay. Um, I know why all the I know why the WF won't let their guys do the show. I've been listening to every one of the shows from that short period, and when there were tons of WF guys on, and I figured out why they wouldn't let them back, because they were all really good and no harm was done. But then came Kurt <laughs> Angle. Go back and listen to the show, and he basically tells you everything that ends up happening. So it's Kurt Angle's fault. He just, he did hint uh, that he was going to win King of But, every, I mean, who didn't know Kurt He also hinted win? that he was going to be a badass by summer. Yeah, well, summer of 94. I mean, 2004. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, no. Don't even, I don't even want to read this. Call me stupid, and I'm about to. I truly believe in less than a year and a half, ECW will restart on cable. Okay, there we go. That's not as good as the email I got from somebody that wanted to know how much it would cost to buy ECW because he thought he could round up enough money. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Have any wrestlers ever changed their name to their character name? Uh, Buddy Landell and Ultimate Warrior, or is you know they have his his legal name is Warrior Jim Helwig. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably a lot of others actually. But those two pop into my head. What is with the lack of Edge and Christian interview time? They were doing such a great job. Is, did one of the writers who was doing their segments quit? Or is this a case that, that of Triple H think that E and C are a threat to him as the top heel tag team? Yeah, they did get that word out that they were like, um, what was the word out? That, that they were 
uh, they hogged the writer and they were kiss asses and you know. Oh yeah. Why would it matter were... though? Because if one writer is fired, like nobody else knew what the idea was going to be when he's gone, and someone else can just step in. Like every writer has their own secret ideas they don't share. Yeah. Uh, after what happened? How much would it cost that? to buy and restart ECW? Do you know how much it would cost to run per month or year once it has been purchased? I might be able to get enough money. After what happened on Raw and SmackDown with the Hardys going over, do you think it, it's too much too fast? How old are they, like 23, 24? Oh, God, how old are they Jeff's, right now? I think Jeff's young. Wait, Jeff might be 23 now. He's young. I think Jeff's 23 or 24. I think Matt's about 27. But I don't, I don't have the ages right in front of me. I mean, winning the Intercontinental title from the number two man in the company would sure make them cocky. Hopefully it doesn't. And, you know, they, they've gone from... I don't think the Hardys have had so much of a problem with that. No, I mean, they've gone Especially from nowhere Jeff. to superstardom. They've gone from nowhere to superstar, both of them. And, and uh, no, I mean, I believe me, 85% to 90% of the people in this business, if they had been on, on a run like the Hardys where they come out and get that deafening applause every night after, you know, you know what I mean? It would go to their head, and I think that those guys are the exception. Um, yeah, they're real humble. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Steve in Arizona. Steve, what's going on? What's up? Uh, you guys do a great job, and uh, you make my work a whole lot more bearable. I just want to say thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, listen, uh, a couple quick questions. Uh, who do you guys think, and maybe this is a little too general, but uh, is the best uh, worker in the business today? In the whole world? Yeah. Oh, wow, whole world. Maybe Benoit. How about you, Brian? It was up there. Uh, no, I would say like Kawada, but he's been injured and. Kawada, I, I, you know what? I would say I would say Kawada ahead of Benoit because those matches that Kawada had um, that I've seen. Yeah, yeah I would he hasn't say been going night in and night out. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, he's he does wrestle every night, and he does. And believe me, he sure doesn't wrestle good people. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's true. And he did get a four star match at Tenru, You know, who's fifty plus years old. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say Kawada and Benoit. All right. Um, do you guys have you guys heard of a, a, an indie wrestler? And I don't even know if he he's uh, active anymore. Named Mike Valelli out of California. Mm, I don't know the name. Okay. No. no. All right. And uh, one more thing. Um, do you think that uh, the, the push the Hardys are getting uh, is, is you know going to change the possible main event for uh, for Backlash? I mean. Uh, to me, that just seems should. so. It, it, it just seems so. I, I don't know. I, a lot of people, I think, are, are saying the same thing, but it just seems so. I don't know. Anticlimactic. Something like Hunter and Austin versus uh, Kane and Kane and Taker. I mean, I just hope they don't have like the big man mindset, and that's what they end up doing. But it was like one of those deals where, you know, they, they did Hardys against Hunter and Austin on Monday, and it's like they kind of fell into something that they really didn't expect. Yeah. And you know, Jeff gets his win tonight. And they, I think they could build it up and not do bad at all. Because remember, they had that pay-per-view with, like, uh, what was that pay-per-view where we didn't think it was going to do too hot because it was, like, Rock and Benoit headlining. and uh, um, Fully loaded, and it did, it yeah, did just fine. Yeah, that thing did fine. That thing did awesome. Yeah, it did just fine. Yeah, with so Rock and I Benoit think they and... could do something with that, and I really think they should, but I kind of don't think they will. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. It's a shame because I, I, I really think, you know, uh, getting somebody new over like the Hardys as far as, uh, you know, main event status, especially at a pay-per-view, whether it's, you know, whether it's uh, the pay-per-view after WrestleMania or, 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 or even just Raw. Is okay, just... now, 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 how would you do that? You would go Hunter, if you go Hunter and Austin against the Hardys, I don't really like that one because there's nothing, there's nothing really there. Now, if you did like, I, I could see Hunter and Jeff Hardy and then Austin against... You know, but who, the problem is then who does Austin go against? Yeah, because I don't think Matt would be. No, Austin and Matt, that's not, he's definitely not ready for that. No, you're um, right. Uh, if you yeah. do Austin and Lita and have Lita beat him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then she'll screw up, right? But see, all you really need to do is have, uh, if you need a tag <laughs> match, you could have the tag match set up Hunter and Jeff for the next pay per view. And then you got four weeks to figure out something to do with Austin. Put something in it. Well, with you could him. always do. You wouldn't you could necessarily have put, to have the Austin match come out of that bout. Well, you could always do Austin with Benoit if you had enough time to, you know, really push it hard. But I mean, three weeks is not enough time because Benoit hasn't been pushed hard enough as a, you know, as a babyface yet. Yeah. 
Yeah. But seven well, weeks. You don't necessarily have to even start tomorrow. You don't necessarily have to start after the next pay per view's over. Just well, a slow build, and then after the pay per view's over, start you know picking it up a little bit. Regardless, I mean, I just, uh, they, they've done a great. They, you know, I mean, Austin and Benoit have had great television matches already. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope that uh, I hope that's not the main event because I you know I'm. That was the plan, though. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but ho hopefully it'll change. Anyway, you guys uh, take care. Keep up the good work. Yeah, the other th reason why I think that they're not going to change is because they're ne they already have the next pay-per-view main events booked, and they're stemming from this one. Yeah. So, so you know, that's that's Austin and Undertaker. Uh, I heard Terry Funk a number of years ago say there would only be one or two main companies. I think he actually said that like in 1976. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he sold his Amarillo territory. Uh, what do you think he would say about wrestling 10 years from now? Maybe you can get him on and see. Um, I'd like, I'd, Al, we, uh, have you talked to Terry Funk or anything? The last time I spoke to him, he says, I'm going to check my calendar and I'll get back to you. And, well, he might have forgotten, so I'll have to call him back. Okay. More WCW show ideas. Uh, WCW minimum wage wrestlers. WCW Valley Wrestling. Oh, that's bad. WCW Saturday Stasiac. <laughs> oh. WCW Sunday morning. WCW Shotgun Saturday night. WCW sold out. Uh, so let's see. Potential taglines to help the new WCW. Luger free television. How WCW, about WCW hate the game. Yeah, WCW the world's most expensive wrestling angle. Hey, we still get Kiwi. See the future WWF mid carders before they're in the WWF. If you're at home late on a Saturday night, you're probably a wrestling fan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> see WCW run into the ground by that other Vince. <laughs> Not actually WCW, but an amazing likeness, and please watch. Oh, some of this is good. Do you think Steen can be of any use in WWF? Um, he's very outdated. I don't even know how he survived in WCW with his hitting his chest and saying, Showtime, folks. I think he'd be booed like Kurt Angle. And slurs would be yelled at him by the audience. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, yeah, he's look, at, look at what that WCW name has caused. That name, there's something about the name. I mean, it's not even the same organization anymore. You know, they got 24 of the wrestlers, but that's it. And this name, till the end of time, will be the butt of jokes. Yeah, let's go to Gerard. And they were able to help with their own poll. Yeah, no, they didn't, because they, they're the ones who started this. What's up, Gerard? Uh, not much, you guys. We're doing great. Hey. That's good. I have a, a question. Now, you're probably going to laugh, but uh, let me ask it anyway. We don't laugh at our callers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, even for a short time, it's possible that Hulkamania could run wild like it's never ran before? Like it's never ran before? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just... No, he's trying to make us laugh. Of course not. Even say you go back when when Vince was, was naming all the WCW guys, Hogan's name got a pop. When Big Show came out as Hogan, everybody was chanting Hulkster. I think that there's a lot of people my age, you know, I'm 24, who grew up, Watching Hulkster being the hero, who would you know like to see him back, even if it's for you know a little while. I, oh, I mean, there's a chance Hulk, that if... Hulkamania could run wild again, but to say it could run wild bigger than ever, there's no way. Absolutely no <laughs> chance. What about no, Hogan I mean... coming, coming back and uh, dethroning Austin from yeah, the side never of happened. Vince? Never happened. <laughs> no, not, that one won't happen. But no, with I mean, the fighters and like... the prayers, anything can happen. Yeah, as far as as far as taking him back for one show, if he were you know under the right circumstances, I could see that. As far as full time, uh, that's going to be tough for a lot of reasons. It's it's there's just, just it's you just don't want a cancer in you know gnawing away at your federation that's making so much money. That's understandable. <laughs> and uh, one more thing, I think that that for the new WCW, they they have to do what they can to get Flair just just to start it off, not wrestle, just you know maybe a Shane side or something. You know, I just they, hope they, that the We Want Flair chance start up again. They can, then they'll be the stuck. Deal. Yeah. They can get him. You know, it's just a question of they want him. They can get anyone they want. It's it's like, it's not like they're going broke. It's not like they can't afford, like, Bill Goldberg's contract. They can get him. It's just, you know, do, do they want to pay for him? And it's a, it's a strict business decision. And I can understand why. I can understand why they wouldn't want to break the bank. I mean, and, and, and you know, I mean, if I was in Vince's shoes, mm -hmm. um... If I was in Vince's shoes, I probably would work on getting Flair, and I would probably realistically say uh, I wouldn't get Goldberg at the beginning, and if I needed to, then I would get him. But I would wait. I would wait to see if I needed him. You know, I because mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of money, and you're breaking a salary structure at the same time. If it's worth it in the long run between this angle making and not making it, then it's worth paying him. 
Yeah. But I would I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sign him first. I would I would kind of sit back and see okay how's it how's Watch it going. that first show. We'll know so well, much after that first show airs. Yeah, yeah. the first the first three weeks. First three weeks. Because the first show, you know what, Brian? The first show they may get a fluke good rating like XFL too. I'm not saying so week, much about the rating. I'm talking about crowd reactions. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, but like, I what if there's a Goldberg chant all night that first show? Well, then then uh, you're gonna be. Um, what about we want flare chants? Remember those. I think if yeah, you end up with Flair, it'll, it'll be it'll be a you know strong foot to start off on if he's there. Um, well, but it's a great it's it's at least a guaranteed great interview on the show if he's motivated because you know when when Flair's motivated and, and really wants to do a good interview you know he's he's awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's about it. Did you see the EMLL? You probably didn't because it, it was. I don't know if you started watching it yet. It was only two or three weeks ago. When, uh, no, 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 it was. It was longer than that. I saw it in tape. That's right. But anyway, when they, I have a when comp they sh- tape from the whole year, though, so I can see it. Okay, so now th- th- it was the segment where they took Emilio to the to the beauty parlor and had him and his hair had his hair done. I didn't that see was, that one yet. Oh, that was so classic. Or the one where they brought him <laughs> to this like you know uh, menswear place and they had him trying on all these suits and he comes out in this really snazzy suit. Some of that stuff uh, at Los Guapos was so campy. Some of those terrible. skits are so funny. I don't even know what they're saying, but they're just hilarious. Oh, they're just trim- yeah. So um, but anyway, when Porky Scor- got thrown into the uh, big fountain, he just gets attacked on the street by two of these uh, luchadors in their masks. I might add. Oh, he's yeah, yeah, on the street walking, just crying. walking down the street. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the two heels that. Yeah. Well, the, the um, what was, was going to say about um, Scorpio? Okay, Scorpio Junior. Um, oh, God, how am I going to say this story? Scorpio Jr. He actually lost his mask, and I was I was sure he would never lose his mask because Scorpio Jr. is like one of the ugliest human beings I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some guys, yes. some guys. I was like I was thinking, you know, he's because I I'd met him many times, okay, and it's like it's like this guy is never losing his mask, and then he went and did. <laughs> but anyway, his father, Scorpio Sr. This is a true story. He used to wrestle in Los Angeles, and he used to feud with Chris Adams, okay, and this, the, the, they used to bill it as. Chris Adams was billed as the handsomest man in wrestling, which, if he ever did that gimmick today, would be like death. But anyway, that's what they used to bill him as. Actually, when I was a kid, they used to bill a guy named Paul Diamond as the handsomest or sexiest man in wrestling. Was this like a babyface role? No, these were total babyface roles, you know, to draw women and stuff. Wow. Oh, the Chris the Chris Adams push in Los Angeles. I mean, they, they used to have a Chris Adams fan club, but you could only join if you were a girl. You know, things like that. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking, like, if they try to push a guy like this. Actually, you know what? That'd that's be a, a hell of a gimmick for a heel. Oh, that's a great heel gimmick today. Right, anyway, that's, that, that's neither here nor there. So they used to feud him with this guy, Scorpio, Scorpio Sr., not Scorpio Jr., the father. And Scorpio, to, to feud with Chris Adams, he was billed as the ugliest man in the world. <laughs> and before he ever came, you know, Chris Adams actually brought up, did, did a promo, you know, for Scorpio Sr., and said, you know, I was wrestling in Mexico. And, you know, Chris came to Los Angeles from wrestling in Mexico. And goes, and... uh those of you fans here in Los Angeles, I just want to warn you ahead of time, he is the ugliest man in the world. <laughs> and that's where he got his nickname. So anyway, um, uh, to Scorpio. So so anyway, his son, oh, God. Genetically. His, his son was not good looking to begin with. And then and then they, their whole family, you know, they're, they're very prone to acne. And then, you know, Scorpio Jr. started doing those other things that give you more acne. Because he Protein had a great chase. body. Okay, he had the taking, you know, eating chocolate, right? So anyway, um, I just remember watching like Scorpio wrestle in Tijuana. Scorp- this is Scorpio Jr. now, and he would. Uh, this is so gross. He would like bounce off the ropes and like oh, these zits I would. This. Oh, please. You you read about this? Button. Yes. Okay, these zits would pop. Turn my headset off while you tell a story. <laughs> okay, that's it. No more Scorpio stories. Uh, I got to read. You can tell a story. Talk- I just don't want to hear it. Okay, I just did. This is from Todd Martin, who was actually, I think, just about the best letter writer we have, and he's. He goes, I was listening to your show on Tuesday, and I really took offense at the way you in an email said it was a double standard that women can kick men low, but men can't attack women, and implied there was something wrong with this. Of course there's a double standard when there's widespread rape and violence toward men by women in this society, then we can start worrying about that being portrayed. When there's widespread rape and violence towards men by women in our society, then we can start worrying about that being portrayed. Men and women are physically different. Don't let the male-oriented fantasy world of pro wrestling delude the very serious issue of mistreatment of women in the world. If anyone tries to say that violence by women towards men is going to have the same negative repercussions as violence by men towards women in pro wrestling, they're either completely out of touch with reality or kidding themselves. You know what? You're right. You're, you're really right because there's also the thing of what's taught to be okay by watching wrestling um, as far as treatment of men by women, and also as, as a male-oriented business, 
um, there's a certain uh, view of women, um, of portrayal of women as sex objects that is not there on men in pro wrestling. Segments like the one with Lita on Monday shouldn't be banned under any circumstance, but they should be treated with more caution than Linda kicking Vince Lowe. Okay, what was the time the Pride Show was on? It was on 6 o'clock Friday. I know that there's lots of replays still this month, so uh, check on DirecTV. Uh, let's see. In one of the Indiana Jones films, at one point, there's a German soldier doing a German suplex. So that's cool. Wow. Uh, better, better than a Belgium. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, it's more on TSN. Let's go to Chris in Toronto since we're talking about TSN. How you doing? Hey, Dave. How you doing? Doing really good. Good. What's up, Chico? Hey. Hey. Um, I had a couple quick questions and a comment. Won't take that long. Um, what's with the Jericho bashing today? I missed the first part of your show, but I heard you basically beat the no, shit Brian, out of him. Brian, Brian, Brian got some letters from people who um, are trying to justify that uh, that nobody's like holding Chris Jericho back. He just stinks. Okay. Yeah, check out so. the feedback section on the website. It's all up there. Is it up there now? Yeah, for the oh. past two days. It's up in okay. the feature section. Cool. I'll check it out. Um, the second question I had, uh, how come the law guys can seem to get all, like, any WWF guests they want, and you can't. Is it, like, a personal thing or what? Probably. <laughs> it, it must be, because, I mean, they get anybody they want. You know, so what's, you know what's so funny about that is, like, <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, no, no, actually, from a technical standpoint, what I was told is that, um, because we're on the web and not on radio, okay? This is mm -hmm. what I was told, that certain people in the WWF see this show as competition for what they do themselves. However, since the law is on regular Aren't radio, we and the law, and, and opposition to bite this anyway. Um, no, I don't even know what time that show's on. Okay, but the thing is, the thing, the thing is, well, they just consider it. Um, they consider it like they don't want their guys doing website interviews, although they do interviews on our website. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, in a sense, well, the, the justification observer, there is Alex is doing those for the newspaper column, and he just puts right. them up on the site. So it's right. not exclusive. And the, justi the ju site. and the justification of the law is is that they're on regular radio. Although the law does not have an easy time getting most WF guests, they can get some, you know, when they're up in Canada, and they're not. There's obviously no ban on them. But for a long time, for a long time, actually, they couldn't get any, and now they're kind of softening it. But you know, I think a lot of that is is you know Toronto and Carl Demarco and things like that. Whereas, um, but he's got some stroke. Yeah, the, and, and you know the, the difference is is like there are people who you know obviously a lot of people in WWF who know me, but it's not good politically to go to bat for me where it's not. So it, it, it it's it's a lot less politically bad to go to bat for Jeff Merrick. I don't even ask anyone to, so it's not like you know, but but because because they can't, you know, okay. you know, it's like you know, my, I, I got twenty years of negative stigma for those for some of those people, not all of them. Just what can you do, right? Them. What? What can you do? I guess not much. Yeah. Anyway, just a couple of quick, uh, I guess, questions or comments before I get out. Um, Dave, I asked you like a month ago if you're coming in the chat room. You've never shown up. Are you coming? Um, I tried one day and I couldn't figure it out. Are you serious? But, uh, it's yeah, simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Brian I should be able there. to help you. He comes in all the time. Yeah, I know. And uh, just secondly, that, that WCW naming contest. Yes. I checked out the site yesterday, the WWF site, but they don't give you the results when you vote. Yeah, I know. Um, what do you guys think of w, uh, WCW Hotbox hosted by Kim Page? <laughs> Just a thought. get her. Huh? Yeah. Oh, they sure. Do. Everyone can get her. Anyway, guys, I got to get on to the next calls, man. I knew there was a joke in there somewhere. All right. Oh. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Uh, let's see. This is from A&M from Stony Brook, who said, like, on last week's show when you were asked... About great amateur wrestlers, uh, you forgot Jumbo Saruta, who was seventh in the 1972 Olympics. Well, actually, the person asked about um, active wrestlers, I think, because um, you know I would have brought up, um, or maybe maybe not, I don't know. But yeah, Jumbo Saruta, Jumbo Saruta was amazing. He was in the Olympics 18 months after starting amateur wrestling. I mean, if you really think about that and understand amateur wrestling, that's just like it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. You know what a incredible natural athlete that guy must have been. Uh, let's go to Chris in Long Island. Chris, what's going on? Uh, hi, how's it going? It's going hey. good. I just want to say hello to everybody in the uh, Observer Live chat room, too. Um, also, uh, the question I had was about, one is about Mexican wrestling, one's about the Jeff Hardy situation. A friend of mine wants to know uh, what the exact difference is between EMLL and CMLL, if any. Um, not really anything. I mean, 
CMLL is what they call it on television, but EMLL is like the actual name of the company, I think. Oh, okay. But, but they're, they're used, like the belts are called CMLL belts. Um, the names are used interchangeably. There might be like, um, I mean, at one point there was like a, a CMLL promotion and an EML promotion, and they actually traded talent, but I think that, I think that now they're just interchangeable names. Oh, okay, because he also said too, like, cause he, while he has a dish, he gets to see the EML show. He said something about like, he think, he did, does, Triple A work with the ML at all, or are they rivals? No, they don't no, work. they're 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 bitter rivals. Okay, because he seemed to be confused because he could have sworn he saw some people from Triple A on EML. Well, shows. It's, a, it's a three hour block and it's half Triple A and half EML. Oh, okay, okay, well you know what, you know what, but there's certain care. Well, actually, that's not true because most of those guys. Well, I mean, um, there's a Mosca Sagrada in both promotions, so that could be where you're thinking of something, or maybe there's like a mini of a Maxi, in like you know, switch back and forth based on jumps and things like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure either. So, okay. mini, mini, mini Chico. <laughs> oh boy. He said there was a minis match the other day. I think you mentioned it. Mini Chico like, better have really like one good. leg. <laughs> <laughs> mini Chico is going to work like Jim Helwig. No, um, no, the minis match that I saw on Tuesday night was with uh, on AAA was just awesome. Yeah, he said something about it being really good. Um, yeah. the, the thing with Jeff Hardy, do you think the reason that they I mean, some people, somebody was saying something about, oh, do you think it's too soon? But with guys like Jeff and Matt Hardy, especially Jeff, if if they ever have intentions on pushing this guy to be anything, given the style that he wrestles, they know their their window of opportunity might be kind of small because <laughs> of I mean I mean and like seriously I mean oh yeah no yeah because the way he wrestles you know they may, they they don't have the time to wait maybe four or five years to give this guy a shot if they for whatever reason they think he was ready now whether it's yeah. on the mic or, or with the character so. I don't think that that much thought was put into this as much as it just sort of like happened and it's like, okay, let's go with it. Right. You know, yeah. I don't think that it was like this careful thing where they're sitting there going like, well, Jeff's only got three years left, so we got to give him his main events now. I think just sort of like, let's put this match on TV, see how it goes. Then they went and it's like, wow, this went better than we expected. Let's go, let's, let's keep going. You know? yeah. It's hard to say, it's hard to say how he's going to do for interviews because he's never really been tested. I, mean, yeah. I thought he did good on Monday, but yeah, it's not like he's, good, yeah. he's been that out there looking horrible that wasn't, for months. That wasn't like an eight-minute interview. That was like three lines. That's true. Yeah. Though, yeah. He hasn't been tested as far as like cutting an actual promo and getting the crowd going, you know, which I don't... I mean, the little bit of talking they did in the ring, they haven't shown to be anything special when it comes to that, but I guess given time, they could always work on that. So, um, Also, the other thing I was going to ask was, uh, as far as this... Are they really going to... I mean, this is WWF, so we know with their polls, they kind of, you know, do whatever they want to do, but... Are those? I mean, of those names, I mean, are they going to actually leave it up to the fans, or are they just getting an idea? Because I mean, they're just going to go whatever they want, right? They're okay. they're 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 going to pick with the name that they're going to pick. I don't I don't think you know if they said on the website like this is the actual thing, whoever gets the most votes wins, then they're doing it. But this one, I think, is just for fun. I yeah, but look at all the old like nine hundred line contests that they did. Just because they said that this was going to be legit didn't mean that it was. Sure. Yeah. As a, I mean, I couldn't believe that name hard on that they would actually consider it. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, they got enough trouble as it is with all of these, you know, PTC. I don't know if it was supposed to be hard on or if it was just supposed to be WCW hard on Saturday night. But that's, but what do you, they, yeah. what, they, I mean, they the, the figure, point was, yeah, I'm sure that that's why they that out. That's not a play on words, come on. But, you yeah. know, if anyone says, I'll just go, oh, no, it's just WCW hard. But it's on Saturday night. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess they, they were looking to just... Kind of if TSN that. calls. Yeah, because TSN now they have to. Don't they have to apo- You said they have to apologize. Yeah, they got to apologize for for not editing out like uh, some of those terms that, that Chris Jericho used for Stephanie McMahon. But I heard from people that, that that's the same station. They played like the um the Marty McSorley thing where he kind of like I, I don't even know the exact incident. Oh well, kinda... everyone's seen the Marty McSorley thing a million times. Yeah, stick that, to the head. I mean, yeah. I've seen that you know everywhere. But they play that, but they don't. They won't allow certain levels of violence from wrestling. Even well, if Marty, if Marty McSorley, you, know, you got to say Marty McSorley didn't do it to a woman. Oh, uh, so the, the thing is only if it's not that, women. not that if he did, not that if he did, they would probably still play it. But yeah, if he attacked like a didn't. female fan, I'm sure they would show it. If for some reason he snapped on like a female fan, um, yeah, but he'd also be in, he'd also be in jail for he'd it. He'd be in so. jail. Yeah. That's why they would show it. They would go like, you know, I mean, you'd get the repercussion aspect. I but don't know. I presume it was a news story too, and not just something on a goofy wrestling show. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, that's all I had. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, we are totally out of time right now. I want to thank everyone for joining us tomorrow. Um, we're going to be on tape with uh, Nova, so I can tell you it's a really good show because it's already happened. And Monday we'll be back uh, live, and uh, we'll be talking about. Uh, Whatever's going on this weekend, there's Easter's pretty quiet weekend overall, although uh, 
a uh, big couple of big Japan shows on uh, Saturday. We can and Sunday. talk about Easter. We can talk about Easter. We can do that too. Okay, we'll see everybody uh, Monday at five.